on the last video, we talked about the prior requirements of the SQL Server. And now it's time to, to actually start put those things on the, the server. So let's build up the, the SQL Server, install the, the requirements, um, and everything that we need to make sure that the SQL works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to uh, my server. This is my um, Active Directory server. So I'm going to the server 02. That's going to be where I'm going to install um, the SQL server. So I'm just going to open a red mount the, the ISO. So I have the ISO here. And I'm going to double click the setup.exe. And now it's going to start the installation. So every time I need something, for example, a account being created, I'm going to go back to the um, Active Directory and create that account. So here on the SQL Server installation, I'm going to installation and install a new standalone version. So I have a read a license key. Um, so I'm just going to click next. But in your case, you could have a free version, evaluation version, depends on where you download the ISO. I'm going to accept the license terms. Now it, the installation is seeing if there is any uh, updates that need to be applied. I will just click next. The installation now is scanning for all the setup files. While it's doing that, and also installing some of the, 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 the files, while it's doing that, let me show you how I configure the SQL in terms of disks, memory, CPU, and so on. So this server here has multiple disks. The C drive is where the OS is installed. The D drive is where I'm going to install SQL. So all the binaries is going to be there. The E drive is where I'm going to put the SQL data. And F is where <clears throat> I'm going to put the uh, SQL logs. So I'm going to split those things. And in a real scenario, you want to do split those maybe in more disks, uh, maybe a couple of databases in one, a couple of databases in another. It depends on how you, your environment will be. For up to 25K, uh, machines, this is quite good. Also, in terms of CPU and memory, I have 16 gig of memory for this machine, and also I have four virtual CPUs. So, kind of bare the minimum for 25,000 devices. Okay. So, the first screen we get here now on the installation rules. It talks me about firewall. So we have the Windows firewall, and it's telling me here there is a warning. So because I didn't have, I didn't actually create any firewall rules. And in this case, if we open here uh, the link, it's going to tell us what are the, the firewall rules we will be requiring to open. Okay, so it's quite simple. We just need to open a couple of ports that normally is the 1433. But it, again, it depends during the installation if we are going to change or not. You can see here that uh, it allow, there's already the PowerShell here for us. I will leave this open here because we are going to use shortly. So the next one here, what we are going to install. So the first thing we, we need is database engine. Of course, we want to install the database. And you can see here, everything that's going to be installed, if not already installed. In, in your case, here is going to be just 2017, and PowerShell 3 is already installed. There is nothing else I need to select. The second part is where I'm going to install SQL. Remember that I have different partitions, and one partition is the D where I'm going to install the binaries. 
So I'm going to change here from C to D. And then next. Now configuration manager, oh, SQL is telling me what the instance. So this is where the name of the instance and the port will connect. Normally the default instance is called MS SQL Server. And now we are going to see this on the um, services. And the default port will be then 1433. If you are changing the, the, the default instance, then I'll make sure that you know which port is going to be installed. I'm going to use the default instance. Just click Next. And also, we are going to see later on where we can check if the port is 1433, 1434, or whatever the, the port number is, and also be able to change if required. So a couple of things on this screen. The first is the service account. So we can see here that we can install with a couple of accounts. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change those for a single SQL service account. So in this case, I will need to create an account. So I'm going to open here Active Directory. And I have a OU structure where I have here service accounts. And I'm going to create here a new account called SVC. And SQL. And I'm going to put a name and also a password. But for password, I don't want this account to, to expire, so I will put password never expire in the account. We cannot actually change the account the next logon because there is no going to be a physically someone logging with that account. And that's it. So I have here now SVC underscore SQL. And this I'm going to use for all the services that we are going to use in the SQL. In this case, database engine and SQL service agent. So I'm going to just select here browse. And you're going to browse for that account, SVC SQL. And I'm going to put here the password. The same for the database engine. Okay, the next I need to look at collation. This is a specific one that is required by Microsoft. So if I'm going to back to the uh, SQL. If I'm not wrong with this, we can see here the database collation that we need to use is SQL underscore Latin one general CP1 CIAS. And this is not the one we have there, because the one we have there is Latin one general CIAS. So to change this, we are going to click in customize, select a SQL collation, and now we scroll down. It's going to be, oh, I just lost it. SQL Latin one. No. One general. CP1 CIAS. So what exactly it means? We can see here the description is Latin one characters, is case insensitive, accent sensitive. Okay, so just click down, make sure it's the correct one. So CP1 CIIS, click OK, and now click Next. And now we have down the database engine configuration. So here, we are going to use mix authentication and you're going to specify who is going to be the administrators. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a group that is for the SQL admins. And they will have full access to that box. So, or 
not that box, sorry, full access to the SQL. So in this case here, right now I'm using the administrator. So I'm going to use add the administrator. Later on, we are going to create the configuration manager admin. And um, remember, this is a lab so that I can use administrator everywhere. But if you're going to use in production, ideally it would be a service account for the SQL installation. Now, so in this case, I'm going to add the SQL admins. Data, where we are going to put the data. So remember what I said, I have SQL data on E, and SQL logs on F. So I'm going to start putting the E and logs I'm going to put on the F. This is where you may have more drives. If you have more drives, for example, for backup that I could put on the extra drive. In my case here, I'm going to use only the E drive as well. Now we are looking at TMPDB. So the TMPDB, Again, if you look at my spreadsheet, let me bring it back here. I forgot that I have closed. You can see here, for the tape DB for 25, how many files I will need, what is the size. So this is what you actually need because tape DB is used a lot. So in my case here, I will keep the tape DB again on the E and the log files on the F. The initial size is going to be 8 out of growth 64. For our environment here, it's okay. But remember, if you have, for example, 25,000 devices, those change a little bit. I will need two files of 42 gig and the log file be one file of 21 gig and the outgrowth around four gig. So it depends on what we are using. So for a single lab environment, the default settings are more than okay. Then later on, I need to have the memory. So what is going to be our memory settings? I can use the default, I can use a recommended, so I can change. We are going to change this later on. So after the installation, then I'll tell you exactly where you go to change the min and max memory. Depends on the memory you have. So if you go back to, to my spreadsheet, for a 16 gig of RAM, I'm going to need minimum value of 10 gig and maximum value of 13 gig around. So this is in megabytes. But then I'll show you later on where, where we change. In this case, I will click next. And now it's ready to be installed. I will click here to install. So this installation will take anywhere between five and 30 minutes. Well, it depends on the speed of the hardware you have. Um, in a real life scenario, it will be much, much faster than on the lab that we have. So the installation finished. It didn't take actually that long, about five minutes, I'd say so. So now it's just click close here. And that's it for the installation. Let's close everything else. So that's it for this video. You can see it's a red night time. Have to put the lights on. Uh, but this is quite simple installation. There are a lot of steps just for the installation. You saw downloaded the software, service accounts, that if you are doing in production, there are many people that you need to connect to. Maybe you are not the responsible for creating accounts, download the software from volume licensing and so on and so forth. But this is just installation. In the next video, we still needed to do some of the 
uh, upgrades, install a new software for management, as well as perform initial configurations like we didn't do during the installation, the memory. But while you're still here, don't forget to like, share, and if you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe and click that little bell icon, and then you're going to be always notified when we upload a new content. Thank you very much for watching, and then see you on the next video.